Have you ever felt stuck on a study topic or overwhelmed by planning that dream vacation to make sure that it ticks everybody's boxes? Or simply, have you just felt like there's not enough hours in the day? ChatGPT can help you with this and so much more. Hey, it's Chris here and in today's video, I'm going to show you 20 insanely useful ways that you can use ChatGPT. Let's dive in. So one of my favorite uses of ChatGPT is to assign it a role. So let's take as an example that we want to write a promotional email to a student to encourage them to buy an iPhone. We could simply write something like this. Write a short promotional email to a student to encourage them to buy an iPhone. And if we ask that. All right, so that looks okay. It's a very basic email. There's nothing that really stands out to me as something amazing here that's going to convince a student to buy an iPhone. So we can make a small tweak. If we just come back up here and edit our initial prompt, and then at the beginning, let's just say, act as a persuasive copywriter, and then ask ChatGPT to come back to us again. And you can see already just in this first couple of lines, there's so much more personality in this email compared to what we had initially. And that's because we've assigned it the role of a persuasive copywriter. Even just the headings that it's had under introducing the new iPhone, they're so much more appealing than they were before. So if we look here, we've got seamless integration, camera excellence, student-friendly apps, versus what we had before, which is just study smarter, stay organized and capture moments. And you can assign ChatGPT a role for almost anything. So whatever your individual use case is, make sure you start with act as a. So the next tip is you can actually ask ChatGPT to give you personas for a product. So if you work in sales and marketing, this is a game changer. You can just give ChatGPT a product and it's gonna tell you the sort of people that would buy that. So we can say, give me three personas that would buy this product. And then I've just copied and pasted in a product description from Amazon for an iPhone. So you can see there instantly, ChatGPT has come back with three personas that it thinks would buy an iPhone. We've got the tech savvy student who's interested in things like photography and vlogging. We've also got things like the busy professional, people who like traveling, they also like hiking. So again, they're probably gonna be using the phone for the camera, but also they like to try out the latest gadgets. And this is the latest iPhone. There's a desirable factor around that. So those sorts of people that want the latest tech in their hands are going to want this product. And now you can see we could design an entire marketing campaign for each of these personas that ChatGPT has given us. Now, one thing that's an absolute game changer from ChatGPT is that it can help you learn almost anything. And it can even dumb down topics that are quite complex. So let's take British politics, for example. So what I could say is this, explain British politics to a five-year-old. And you can see now we're going to get a response back that is tailored towards a child that is five years old. So we're using really simple language, not too much jargon in here at all because it's targeted towards that five-year-old. And you can see it's already explaining some key things. So we've got the House of Commons, comparing that to more like a classroom where members of parliament are more like students. And then you've got the House of Lords, which is the teacher's lounge. So you can see this really does give you that nice top level summary explaining a complex topic in just a few short paragraphs. But maybe we think that's a little bit too simple and we kind of already had this knowledge. So we could take it a step further and say, explain British politics to a 15 year old. And how will that change the result? You can see already we've got a bit more jargon in here, a bit more complex language. But you can continue this forever. So if you find the 15 year old example just a bit too in depth, maybe go for a 10 year old. You can also use ChatGPT to help you adjust the tone of your writing. Let's say, for example, you want to email your boss and ask for a pay rise. You could write that email, but you really want that to be persuasive and demonstrate that you deserve that pay rise. So what we can do is we can copy and paste in a draft of that email into ChatGPT and then ask it to change the tone. So for example, make this email to my boss more persuasive so that he is encouraged to give me a pay rise. And we do a colon, then hold shift and hit enter twice. 
copy and paste the email in that you've drafted, which I have here. You see, it's a really simple email that we've put in there. And ChatGPT is now writing this in a more persuasive way. And you can see that this is now so much better. It might not quite be perfect, but it's given you so much more to work with. You can see, whereas before we'd simply just said, I think my performance has been exceptional this year and I have contributed over 100,000 in sales. We've now said that you've been deeply committed to driving the team's success and you've been fortunate enough to contribute over 100,000 in sales. That achievement is also demonstrating not just your dedication, but the value you bring to the company. So already just in that paragraph, it looks so much stronger than this first sentence here. Right, and the next thing you can do is you can generate to-do lists. So let's say I have a text message from my wife asking me to do a few things. It's a bit of a longer text message. I don't really have time to read it because I've been sitting here playing FIFA, enjoying my alone time. So I just want a quick to-do list to be made out of this. Generate a to-do list from this paragraph. Again, hold shift, hit enter twice, paste in the paragraph, and you can see now straight away ChatGPT is just summarizing that text message for me. If you had a really long paragraph, even more than this, it would do exactly the same thing. So you can see here, I need to clean the house. I need to go shopping for veg, chicken, soda. I need to visit the supermarket that's now on the outskirts of town, change the kids' bedding, and call my mum to plan next week's activities with the kids. But we could actually take this a step further. Because I have a list here, but I don't really know how long this stuff's going to take. Can I continue playing FIFA for a bit longer or do I need to get moving because I know my wife is going to be back in the next five or six hours? So we could ask ChatGPT this. Assign an estimated time required for each item and organize them from high to low. So that way I'm going to have the tasks at the top that are going to take the most time. And at the bottom, I'll have the ones that are going to take the shortest amount of time. So these are all going to be estimates. ChatGPT doesn't know how big my house is. It would have a better idea if I gave it that context. But two hours for the size house I have is probably fair. In the text message, you'll have noticed that my wife actually specified how long it takes to get to this new supermarket. ChatGPT has remembered that and it's added that into this time here. So it's going to be about a 40 minute round trip. Then I need to spend some time in the supermarket, picking the items, queuing up. So an hour and 30 is probably realistic. Changing the kids' bedding, ChatGPT says that can be done in about 30 minutes. Again, I've not told it how many kids I have, how many beds need to be changed. So if this is just an estimate, if I gave it that information, it would be far more accurate. And then finally, call my mum to plan those next weekend activities with the kids, take about 20 minutes. And now ChatGPT remembers everything that you've already asked it. It's like having a conversation. So if we want to build on this further, we could actually ask ChatGPT for some tips about cleaning the house. Um, I have no idea the best way that I should clean my stainless steel sink. Tell me the best way to clean our stainless steel sink. And I'm also interested to know that will this actually add more time to what it estimated earlier? Does this sink take a longer time? Therefore, that two hours that we were briefed earlier is going to be longer. And there we go, ChatGPT has now told me how I should go about cleaning my stainless sink. It's given me a few optional things to do here. It's told me an estimated time of how long this will take. And yes, it's confirmed that that time it gave me earlier, that two hours, is probably going to add another 15 minutes onto that. So I need to take that into account for when I need to start all these tasks. Now telling ChatGPT to explain something to you like you're a five-year-old or a 15-year-old is just one way that you can use the tool to learn more. A few other ways that you can quickly learn things could be to create a list. So let's say I have a geography exam coming up and I need to be really hot on my countries in Europe. A great way I could do that is to ask ChatGPT to create me a list of European countries. And there you go, it's now creating a list of all the countries in Europe and it's putting them in alphabetical order for me. We can also use ChatGPT to summarize a really in-depth article on a particular topic. So for example, I have this article here from Mark Manson on the only way to be confident. I don't have time to read all of that and develop action items, so I'm hoping ChatGPT can help me with that. So we can say, 
create a summary of this article and list the key action steps I could apply to my daily life. And then we just copy and paste in the text from the article. And there you go, ChatGPT has summarized the article and it's also given me nine key action steps that I can apply to my daily life. So all of a sudden, without reading that article, I'm still going to get a lot of the value out of it thanks to ChatGPT. Now for the next use case, you can use ChatGPT to brainstorm ideas for you. Or well, let's say for example, I'm a personal trainer, I just started out and I need a name for my business. But most importantly, I'm gonna be building a website. So whatever name I pick, I need to make sure that the .com domain name is also available for this. So if you have ChatGPT4, you can actually enable some plugins. And one plugin we want to be using is the GoDaddy name search. So if we just tick on that, come here, and we can ask ChatGPT to help me generate business name ideas. I'm giving you some context by saying the industry is sports and fitness and the product is personal training services. Give me 20 names where the .com domain name is available. And by ChatGPT using the GoDaddy plugin, it will be able to browse if these names are available that it's suggesting to me. Now, while it's doing that, I just want to say that you don't have to have ChatGPT4, the premium version of ChatGPT, to do this. You can ask ChatGPT to still give you some business name ideas and brainstorm on any topic you want. It's just going and using this GoDaddy plugin to find if the .com name's available. That's what comes with the premium version of ChatGPT. So if you didn't have it, you could still go to GoDaddy or any other website that sells domains and just check that those names are available but this is just saving us time. You can see here I've probably been a bit ambitious with the 20 names. ChatGPT's come back with 16 business name ideas where the dot coms are available. So do you remember that I had that geography exam earlier where I needed to learn more about European countries? Well, I did all right on that exam and now the follow-up exam, I need to learn about European capital cities. And this is a topic I'm really struggling on. I don't think just a list is going to help me. I need some help, I need some real study. And what we can actually ask ChatGPT to do is create some virtual flashcards with us and actually help us study and tell us if we've got answers right or wrong. So we can say, create flashcards of the capital city of each European country and quiz me by saying the country. I need to answer by naming the capital city. If I am correct, say correct, let's move on, and ask me the next question. If I'm incorrect, say incorrect, and let's move on. And provide me with the correct answer and then move to the next question. So that is the art of writing the prompt. In summary, we're asking ChatGPT to make some virtual flashcards and effectively quiz us on the capital cities of each European country. If I get it right, great. If I get it wrong, tell me the correct answer and then I can make a note of that so I can quickly identify my weaknesses. So if we ask ChatGPT, you can see it's worked. So what is the capital of Austria? I think that's Vienna. Great, we got it correct. Belgium, what's the capital of that? Um, maybe it's Paris? No, it's Brussels. Okay, um, Croatia. But what's the capital of Denmark? I think it's Copenhagen. Great. But look at that. I've spelt it wrong and ChatGPT has even corrected me the typical way of spelling it in English. I think we can say stop. And now that we've stopped, I just want to ask for some feedback. So we said, can you give me feedback? How would you rate my knowledge of European capital cities? So there we go, ChatGPT has now given me some feedback. It's told me the answers I gave for each country and whether it was correct or incorrect. Also told me the answer I gave if I was incorrect. Told me I got 50% right. And I've got a foundational knowledge of European countries. So sometimes you might have a really in-depth topic that you want to learn more about. It's not going to be something where you can simply just have a conversation with ChatGPT to learn. So for example, say I wanted to learn the programming language Python. 
that's probably not something I'm going to learn just by having a conversation with ChatGPT at the moment. But what I can get ChatGPT to do is give me a learning plan. So we could say, using the Pareto principle, give me a learning plan for Python. So if you're not familiar, the Pareto principle is where you gain 80% of the knowledge by studying 20% of that particular topic. It's basically saying that if you understand those core things from that topic, you're going to do well enough. So you can see it's created me a learning plan. It's told me I've got some Python basics to learn, things with syntax and semantics, I've got some functions to learn, and then once I feel confident with that, move on to more intermediate things here, like modules and packages, and so on and so on. So you can really do like a whole self-learning plan here and then go and implement that over a period of time. Now, another thing you can use ChatGPT for is to do research. So let's say you're a marketing student and you need to write a paper on the negative points of social media. You can ask ChatGPT to go and do some initial research for you. Now, it's still important to not get lazy and make sure you do your own research as well. But straight away, this will save you so much time and send you in the right direction and probably give you some nuggets as well that you can include in your paper. So let's just say to ChatGPT, I'm a marketing student writing a paper on the negative points of social media. Can you research the topic and provide some key points I could include in the paper? And ChatGPT here has just highlighted that its knowledge does not go beyond September 2021. So if you're looking for more recent information, you're going to have to do some work yourself. But it is coming out here with some really interesting things. We've got mental health issues, People can be addicted to social media and getting validation through the amount of likes, shares and comments they receive. There's also cyberbullying, privacy concerns, sleep disruption. It's really done a good job here of finding some different things for us. So even though ChatGPT's knowledge only goes up to September 2021, it's given me loads of things here that I'm pretty sure I could include in my paper. And I might just go and do some additional research just to go beyond that 2021 threshold. By the way, if you're getting value out of this video, I'd love it if you could just take a moment to smash that like button. It really helps me out more than you know, and it tells the YouTube algorithm that I'm providing some value to you. So another thing that we can use ChatGPT for is to help us write speeches. So let's say I'm a dad and my daughter is getting married. Speeches are not one of my strong points, but I do know roughly what I would like to say. So I just need a helping hand from ChatGPT. So we can do this. So let's implement some of the things we've learned already in this video. We're going to start by saying, act as a loving parent. I want this speech to feel like it's come from the heart. It's not about sarcasm. I might crack some jokes in it. But really, it's all about coming from the heart and telling my daughter how proud I am of her and how much I love her. So I'll say to ChatGPT, act as a loving parent, write me a two minute speech for my daughter's wedding. My daughter's name is Steph. She went to school in London, studied marketing at university in Oxford, where she met her new husband, Ben. Steph's qualities are that she is kind and an example of her kindness is when she came home early from a holiday with her friends to look after me when I fell and broke my leg. I'm proud of her kindness and I think she'll be a great wife to Ben. I want to end the speech with a loving comment to Steph and some words of advice to Ben. And here we go. And because we said act as a loving parent, you can see in this first sentence how it's really going with that emotion and that love. Today, as I stand here, my heart swells with pride and emotion. And it's picked up things like I said that Steph was her name she went to school in London, and then in a blink of an eye, she was off to Oxford to study marketing. We talk about her kindness, and we even reference that story that I mentioned about how she came home from holiday with her friends to look after me. We tell Ben he's a lucky guy. We then go into telling Steph directly how much we love her and how proud we are of her. And then we finish with some small advice for Ben. But you can see instantly something as difficult as writing a wedding speech has been made so much easier with ChatGPT. And if you want, you could just take this speech and probably get a real great round of applause afterwards at the wedding. But probably just put a little bit of your own spin on it. Wouldn't be great if you did a whole speech at your daughter's wedding just with ChatGPT. 
Now, another thing that is so annoying is applying for jobs. It can feel like it takes hours. I mean, scratch that. It does take hours, days to search for jobs. Send your CV in and write those dreaded covering letters where you need to really sell yourself and show why for that particular job, you are so qualified. But don't worry, ChatGPT's got us covered for this. So let's say we are a marketer and we're applying for some marketing jobs. We could say, you're a marketer with over five years experience. So again, we've assigned that role to ChatGPT. Your main achievements have been generating a marketing plan that generated $20 million in sales for a telephone manufacturer. And we want you to write a covering letter for this job. And all I'm going to do is simply go online, find a job and copy in the job description. We've put that there. Now let's hit send. And you can see this is even formatting it like it's an actual letter. And already we've got a great letter here that started out with talking about the fact you've got five years experience. Here's our $20 million achievement. What some of your proudest accomplishments are. And then we've also listed some of your skills and experience. So if you wanted to, you could edit this further. You could give ChatGPT more of the skills that you have, some more achievements, and then it's going to populate this letter with those included as well. But one immediate piece of feedback I have is I think this is pretty long. Is somebody really going to read this? So let's just say, make it shorter. And you can see now ChatGPT is making the letter shorter and it's even changing the format. We've gone from a really long letter to a nice introduction and then some bullet points. So you can just keep tweaking it until you get your desired result. Now, the next thing you can do is you can plan a vacation or a holiday with ChatGPT. It can be mega stressful if you have a dream vacation coming up and you've got a few people to please. And I can use a real world example here. One of my dreams has always been to go to New Zealand and go and see all of the Lord of the Rings movie sets and everything else that country has to offer. But I need to go with my wife and my three-year-old son. So there needs to be some balance there. It can't just be Chris going out there and going to every Lord of the Rings movie set and that's it. I think after probably a day or two, my three-year-old would be going crazy. So we need to plan some things in for him as well. So I can say to ChatGPT, I'm going on holiday with my wife and three-year-old son. We're from London and we are traveling to New Zealand for three weeks. My wife and I would like to visit national parks and Lord of the Rings filming locations, particularly Edoras, Rivendell and Hobbiton. I say my wife and I, it's really me. We also want to ensure our son is entertained. Please plan me an itinerary that takes everyone's desires into account. I'm just going to add one extra thing in here. We're going to say we're going for three weeks in December. Maybe ChatGPT has some good recommendations of things to do in that time of year. And there we have it. ChatGPT is now giving me an itinerary for my entire holiday. You can see it's taken things into account like the long flight from London, so we're gonna to need to rest. It's also got time at the zoo for my three-year-old. Then it's got time at Hobbiton movie set for myself. This is all on the North Island, bringing us down towards Wellington at the south of the North Island before moving on to the South Island where we have more things that we can do. And again, we can go to Christchurch and we can see Edoras around there at Mount Sunday. But then it's also found another zoo for my son. Then we can go to Edoras, which is at Mount Sunday. But then the day after that, we can take a bit more of a family day. If we go to Mount Cook National Park, there's several short walks for families. I think my son would love that. He can go around and just run and roam free and enjoy himself. But you could give more feedback to ChatGPT. You could ask it what you could do on Christmas while you're in New Zealand. If you don't like the idea of going to Wellington, you could say, look, take Wellington out of this and replace it with something else. Now onto the next use case, you can ask ChatGPT to summarize a book for you. So one book I've read that I really like is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. But say I've got a friend who doesn't really have the time to read the book and they just want a quick summary and key actions from it. We can say, summarize the book, how to win friends and influence people. List the key takeaways from the book and develop an action plan of how I can practice the techniques in less than 15 minutes per day. 
And there we go. It's given a really nice summary of the book. It is by Dale Carnegie. We didn't tell it that. It just knew that How to Win Friends and Influence People was by Dale Carnegie. This is a book that offers advice on interpersonal skills and leadership. And here are some of the key takeaways from the book. And it's even put them into categories. So we have ways to make people like you. So become genuinely interested in other people. Something simple like make sure you're smiling while you're talking to people. And then we can come down here to the bottom and it's given us a 15 minute daily action plan on how we can implement some of these learnings. And this is an interesting one down here. We can simply take a minute out of our day to practice smiling at ourselves in the mirror or by doing it at someone else. You can also use ChatGPT to create a workout routine. So let's say you want to create a home workout plan for 10 minutes per day and you only want to use 5 kg dumbbells. You also want to give ChatGPT that context that you're a relatively fit 32 year old male and you have no injury history. Let's see what it can give us. And there we go, we've got a two minute warm up and an eight minute workout routine. And I'm gonna give ChatGPT a little bit of feedback. I don't enjoy squats. So can it replace that with another exercise? Can you recommend an exercise to replace dumbbell squats? We can try a dumbbell goblin squats and it's telling us here how we do those instead of just simple dumbbell squats. Okay, so now that we've got a workout plan, nutrition is a big part of living that healthy lifestyle. And I've only got a few things in the fridge for dinner today. So I can ask ChatGPT, so I can ask ChatGPT to recommend a healthy dinner dish that I could make with these ingredients that are in my fridge. Onion, chicken, shrimp, rice, and garlic. Okay, and it's recommending that we create a chicken and shrimp fried rice. It's telling us the ingredients we need here, and it's giving us all of the instructions we need to make the dish itself. You can see it's included a few things that are in our cupboard as well. So hopefully you have these, but if not, you can give ChatGPT that feedback, say you don't have soy sauce in the cupboard, what could you use instead? You could also use ChatGPT to create an FAQ list. So let's say we work in the marketing department at Amazon. They don't currently have an FAQ for one of their Echo devices for whatever reason. We can get that created in a matter of seconds. So simply create an FAQ list for a second generation Amazon Echo Dot. Now you can use the same approach we used earlier where we copied and pasted at the beginning of this video the product description of the iPhone. You could do that here, pull in a huge paragraph, loads of reviews as well that people have had and ask ChatGPT to make an FAQ list from that content as well. And here's my FAQ list for the Amazon Echo Dot. You can see it's come up with some typical questions that would definitely be asked. Firstly, what is that product? How do you set it up? How do you connect it to Wi-Fi? Can you connect an external speaker? All of these things are definitely questions that would get asked about the Echo Dot. So we'll stop generating. And now that we have these questions here, I think a great way of getting this knowledge out into the public is to create some social media posts. So we can tell ChatGPT to create a Facebook post for each FAQ, and we want it to use a witty style to engage the audience. And there you go, ChatGPT has come up with the Facebook posts for each of those FAQs. And it's definitely taken our witty style into account to make them more engaging. So rather than just what is an Echo Dot, we've got what is this Echo Dot thingy? And then it kind of captured your imagination a bit by saying, have you ever wanted a personal assistant? But who wants to pay that price tag for a personal assistant? Well, that's exactly what Echo Dot can do for you. And that does deliver when you think about it. You can schedule appointments with Echo Dot, you can make purchases online, it can play music for you, it can set reminders. It is just like having a good personal assistant. Thanks for watching. I hope you've got some great ideas now on how you can use ChatGPT. To continue your ChatGPT journey, make sure you watch the video that's appearing on screen right now, and I will see you in the next video.